My name is uh, Winfred Gaki. I work at uh, Article 19 Eastern Africa. I'm program assistant, Civic Space. I am working on a project uh, called Destigmatizing Protest in Kenya. And uh, this project aims to change the narrative, the negative narrative around protest in Kenya with an aim of uh, destigmatizing them. I will start with the Constitution of Kenya, which is the supreme law of the land. Article 37 of the Constitution of Kenya protects the right to freedom of assembly, including the right to protest. All other laws derive their authority from the Constitution of Kenya. There is also the Public Order Act, and uh, the Public Order Act uh, deals with issues of uh, freedom of assembly. There is also the Penal Code, and uh, the Penal Code is the main uh, criminal law in, uh, in Kenya. There are laws that, uh, or provisions of laws that are restricting the, the right to protest in Kenya. For one such example is the Public Order Act. Section 5 of the Public Order Act provides for a notification requirement before one uh, wants to protest. The problem with the Section 5 is further down, uh, subsection uh, 10 and 11 criminalize uh, unlawful assembly. And the definition of uh, unlawful assembly in the context of the Public Order Act is where one has uh, not tendered in the notification. The problem, uh, the problem with these laws practically is that uh, effectively they criminalize spontaneous protests. Spontaneous protests happen in reaction to an incident, say where a school child, a school going uh, child, has been knocked down by a rogue uh, matatu. So you see, at that point, one does not have uh, the time to tender in a notification because the requirement is that one has to tender in a notification between three and fourteen days. So that is practically uh, an issue that we have been facing. Protesters have been arrested severely because of uh, this requirement or the failure to abide by this requirement. There is also the penal code which criminalizes uh, unlawful assembly or uh, breach of peace and rioting. Uh, the penal code is uh, extremely problematic when it comes to the right to protest because uh, it gives a lot of power to the police officers. For instance, uh, you will find that under chapter 9 of the Penal Code, uh, once, once the police officer has given a proclamation for dispersing of uh, a riot or you know, uh, people who are uh, assembled, then once, uh, once one refuses or continues to carry on with the, you know, you, with the assembly, then the police officer is allowed to use force and the problem is that uh, the police officer will not be criminally liable, he will not also be civilly liable, whether that force results to death or even uh, you know, physical harm, even though the harm is serious. So these are the issues that uh, we have been grappling with in the Penal Code and uh, in the Public Order Act, and they need to be brought in line with the international best practices especially around management of protests. Last year in 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit Kenya, the government introduced various regulations under the Public Health Act. And uh, these regulations uh, introduced measures such as uh, wearing of masks, uh, maintaining of social distance, as well as a prohibition of uh, public gatherings. Of course, by its very nature, the right to protest, uh, you know, involves public gatherings. You know, it's, a, it's an assembly by its very nature. So this was uh, very much affected. And uh, the government, uh, you know, through the law enforcement agencies, have used these laws to clamp down on uh, protest in Kenya. You will recall the Sabasaba protests, 
and even the uh, COVID-19 millionaires protest in Nakuru, Mombasa and Nairobi, where protesters, were, uh, protesters and activists were arrested uh, based on these uh, COVID-19 uh, regulations introduced. Uh, one of the main uh, charges that was uh, levied against the, the activists was uh, wearing, you know, not wearing of masks, not maintaining social distance, and uh, prohibition of uh, the public gatherings. Yes, there was a decision uh, by Justice Macau in Ngonjiri versus the Attorney General, uh, whose judgment was rendered in July of 2019. In that case, the, the High Court of Kenya gave two orders which have a direct impact on the exercise of the right to protest in Kenya. The first order, uh, you know, uh, asked the government to either enact or amend the existing legislation or regulations in order to provide for demarcated zones for protests, to provide for maximum number of protests, and also to provide for consent, you know, in the adjacent buildings where one hopes to protest, as well as clean up costs after a protest. The second uh, order was to provide for the organizers of the protest to give a detailed account of uh, the liability uh, during the protest. And you see, uh, the problem with the, these orders is that they, they, they are bound to introduce very restrictive, uh, you know, very restrictive laws for protesters in Kenya. Uh, and because they also uh, order the government to provide for penalties, you know, once people contravene uh, these provisions. And so the effect will be to put too much burden on the organizers of protest, who will, uh, who will just, it will create fear, you know. There will be fear of being arrested and there will be fear of uh, being criminally prosecuted. The government of Kenya is signatory and uh, has ratified various international laws that regulate uh, freedom of assembly. For instance, the African, uh, the Kenyan government is a uh, party to the African Charter and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. So, uh, through the frameworks of the monitoring bodies of this, uh, of this uh, international instrument, they have produced interpretive text. For instance, the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, which is the monitoring body of the African Charter, has uh, adopted the guidelines on uh, freedom of as assembly and association and guidelines on uh, policing of assemblies. So the government should uh, adopt those guidelines in the policies and even in the training of uh, police officers in the management of protests. There is also the general comment uh, number 37 on uh, Article 21 of the ICCPR, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Uh, uh, this was uh, adopted last year by the Human Rights Council in 2020, and it offers, uh, you know, interpretive uh, insight into the requirements uh, and how government, uh, the gov how government can implement the right to assembly as provided uh, under Article 21 of the ICCPR. The civil society actors must remain vigilant to ensure that uh, restrictive laws are not introduced. For instance, in 2019, there was a private member's bill to amend the Public Order Act so that uh, they introduce liability for organizers of protests. Uh, and the organizers of protests uh, in that particular bill were supposed to compensate, uh, you know, uh, victims in cases where there was damage to property during protests. So civil society actors have to remain vigilant in order to ensure that such legislation is not passed. They have to be conduct advocacy visits, you know, training on uh, police officers, you know, having dialogue uh, with the uh, duty bearers. 
on how better to implement you know, these uh, international obligations as well as incorporate uh, the guidelines given by this, the international instrument monitoring bodies into their policies and uh, into the legislation. For citizens and the public in general, my message to you is that the, that the right to protest is provided for under the constitution and you're free to exercise your right to protest. You can, uh, you can join our free to protest campaign on Twitter via the hashtag free to protest. Our Twitter account is Article 19 eAfric. Our Facebook account is Article 19 Eastern Africa. Join the conversation and let's protect the right to protest in Kenya.